Sad news, bad news for Blatten. If they want to rebuild Blatten where Blatten was, it can take years or decades until this debris cone will become stable. And I will tell you why, because there is a big, big problem with the composition of this debris cone. We have heard from specialists now, but there is more in this video. How did the glacier on the Kleiner Nesthorn, or let's say under the Kleiner Nesthorn, lose its grip. We know the tip of the Kleiner Nesthorn got loose, broke off, and fell down on the glacier, but not just in the last two weeks. This has been known for quite a while. So right now, seven days after the landslide, the Kleiner Nesthorn still remains unstable and the area is inaccessible. And researchers are gathering further data and insight into the triggers of this extraordinary one in a millennium ice rock avalanche. This is what you have to call it, mountain slash glacier collapse. And there has been a lot of exchange and discussion among glacier researchers in recent days. And together they're trying to better understand and trace the mechanisms of this extraordinary glacier collapse. And this should also help in the early detection of future events. And the headline is, search as an omen. What do they mean? And when I hear what they're saying, I'm, I'm raising the question a little bit, why did they doubt so long that the whole thing might come down? Because researchers and authorities have been observing the Birch Glacier, that's the glacier that came down, for some time. And they have discovered a, how they call it, dynamic instability in the lower part of the glacier. So dynamic instability in a glacier occurs when the glacier tongue, so the front part that you see here with the red lines, that's just the front part of the glacier, continues to lose mass overall. Dynamic instability occurs when the glacier tongue suddenly begins to advance. Even though the glacier continues to lose mass overall due to warming. It's melting. So this process is called surge and it occurs occasionally in glaciers in the Himalayas and in Alaska, but it almost never occurs in the Alps. And just by coincidence, I was talking in a different video about an earthquake in Alaska and then I saw the picture what a landslide happened there. And when I saw the pictures, I'm like, wow, that looks really like Blatten, the same kind of debris cone, how this came down. What do you think? But let's get back to Blatten. What happened in Blatten almost never occurs in the Alps. So Alaska, that wasn't a surprise. But starting around 2019, the glacier tongue of the Lower Birch Glacier had advanced about 50 meters, 150 feet, 160 feet, something like that. So the exact reasons for such a surge are unknown. Why did it do that? Experts are saying this faster flow now appears to be a precursor to what happened on a much more intense scale before the collapse. So the glacier loses grip. Weeks before the catastrophe happened, large amounts of rock and debris from the Kleiner Nesthorn have already landed on the glacier. This has already increased the pressure on the ice, which has changed. And that's the interesting part that we haven't heard before. It has changed the melting point of the ice. And then, Water has formed on the glacier bed. What does that mean? It means on the underside of the glacier and also on the inside of the glacier. And that water can be, act as a lubricant. And to that, springtime coming, add melting snow, add rainwater. The glacier is flowing ever faster and it is becoming increasingly 
less adherent to its subsoil. And they're saying it is really, really quite extraordinary that the entire glacier collapsed with all the debris on it. So the final trigger for that collapse was the collapse of this entire section of the Kleiner Nesthorn flank that broke up. I'm showing you here again how this started, how really the mountaintop broke off. And it's almost like 300 feet, a little less than that, shorter now, that mountain. So this has reached a critical threshold. The entire glacier slid away with all the debris on it, absolutely crazy we still remember the pictures how this thing came down like a volcanic eruption like a phreatic explosion like something we have seen just yesterday at Etna I've made a video about this I'll show you just a short clip and then I'll show you a clip of what happened in Blatten and it's absolutely I mean it's two different things completely but it really looks equally as scary so approximately 3 million cubic meters of ice, 6 million cubic meters of rock have crashed into the Lötschental Valley, according to current estimates. Some even estimate that it's a little more. They have used images that were created by Swiss Topo before and after the landslide and the crashed volumes will now be calculated more precisely. So we will... Um, probably know more in the near future so it but what is interesting or what is crucial to know it is unclear how much ice is buried beneath the debris in the valley and that's difficult to estimate at the moment that's what the experts are saying so how much ice is actually there and how will it behave if it, if it gets warmer summer's coming and is water a problem in this debris cone a professor, a professor at the Geographical Institute of the University of Zürich, Christian Hugge, he has extensive experience with such ice rock avalanches that buried Blatten. And he has studied a massive one, for example, in the Caucasus. He also studied the one that occurred last year in Val Rosec in the Engadin in Switzerland as well. I've been there, by the way, beautiful. So Hugel says that the ice in such an ice rock avalanche, and I think that's a great description because many said glacier collapse, rock collapse. Um, it was like a glacier mountain collapse that sent down a massive ice rock avalanche. I, I think this is how you can describe this chain reaction that was happening. Um, he says, this ice rock avalanche is likely to be largely crumbled and distributed relatively evenly. So like you put a smoothie mixer, some ice and some rocks and you mix it. That's basically what he's saying. And he says at the end of the valley, this mass is very compact with a lot of moisture in it. So he says the snow and the ice in these cones is partly very well preserved because there's a lot of material on top of it, it preserves the ice, it's not melting. So he compares it, he says it's like snow farming in ski resorts where mountains of snow are covered and thus preserved over the summer so that they're ready for skiing in the, win in the winter. So it only melts slowly. And here comes the bummer. He says it can take years or decades until this melts. And until this hasn't fully melted and the material has compacted, it's very unstable. He says the other problem is the more ice melts, the more that debris cone will collapse, of course, because then there's empty spaces that are created where the ice has been. He, so he says this means these deposits will be unstable for years. And since this is so unstable, you can just drive some excavators in and start taking stuff out because it might crumble on you. And although the exact amounts of rock and ice are not yet known, just an estimate, it's clear that the rock falls from the Kleiner Nesthorn played a significant role in the entire event. They have triggered this chain reaction. But 
what has made the whole mountain so unstable not the glacier i'm talking about the rocks that came down so many say oh it's obvious it's climate change but some are saying well wait a minute we have we always had these landslides in the alps and in switzerland so we can't really make uh, like a hundred percent connection with this yes you can say the permafrost it was permanently frozen was holding the rocks together that is now going away is playing a role that i think yeah it makes the mountain unstable but there have always been instabilities yes warmer temperatures thaw the permafrost if the permafrost diminishes or disappears this makes the mountains more fragile but this doesn't have to be the only reason. I think we have to wait a while longer. That's what I have seen in interviews with scientists that are very, very careful to put the blame on something right away. Because also they, they do not have concrete data on permafrost in the area around the small nesthorn, Kleiner Nesthorn. They have models, that's what the experts say, to estimate the permafrost but the permafrost indicator map clearly shows that we expect permafrost on the north side at an altitude of 3,300 meters. And they think that this also applies to the Kleiner Nesthorn, to the small Nesthorn mountain. So it is likely that the warming up plays a significant role, but they're careful. He says, however, we'll never be able to say for sure we simply don't have any measurements so we don't know exactly how warm the rock was and how its temperatures have changed so probably in the future they will install more measuring instruments so interesting update i have way more updates for you guys but it's already 2 a.m i need to get this video out to you and then Tomorrow, there'll be way more updates. You'll be very interested. In the meantime, check out the videos in the end screen. I have a playlist for Blatten where you can watch everything chronologically, shows you all the images, what happened. And also look at the Etna video. That was mind blowing. This was like a white island situation, seeing these tourists run, just that the eruption was way bigger in my opinion crazy absolutely crazy and there's more danger coming from etna than we think and it's related to earthquakes that are not on sicily and not volcanic earthquakes generated by etna but they could trigger etna and we have proof that after big earthquakes somewhere else or bigger earthquakes in over 50 percent of the cases that this was why etna was triggered so watch the videos in the end screen, guys. That will keep you busy until I have the next one tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, check the link in the description. I have a Buy Me A Coffee site. If you buy me a coffee there, leave me a message. I will answer with a 30-second video message. That's the length that they allow. And then you can video message me back and we, we can see each other. I think it's a great um, tool. That's why I like this site so much. So Thanks for supporting this channel. Shout out to my members and I see you very soon. Bye-bye.